In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how easy it is to obtain the source code in a native Android and hybrid Android mobile application. It's actually quite easy, um, but to start things off, we're going to go ahead and obtain the source code to a native Android application. So let's go ahead and start by creating a new project from the command line. We're going to run the following. Alright, and as you can see, it created a, a new project on my desktop. So inside this native Android project, you can see that there's a source directory. We're going to show what the source code looks like. Oh, and I didn't mean to open it up in Xcode. I can actually open it up in uh, Sublime. And this is the source code inside of this, this native Android application. So let's go ahead and compile it and then I'll show you how to extract it. So to compile it, let's navigate into the project directory and then we're going to do adb or ant debug. That's usually the simplest. Alright, build successful and it created an APK file for us inside of the bin folder testproject.debug so I put it on my desktop. This file right here is perfectly fine to install onto a device. And so we're going to go ahead and extract the source code from it. So we actually need two applications in order to make this possible. We need, a per, we need the following applications. We need dex to jar, which converts it from a uh, Dalvik executable uh, format and then it will uh, create it into a jar file and then we need the Java decompiler which will let us read the class files in plain text so I've already downloaded them and let's get things started so from the desktop let's go ahead and extract the test project APK and it's just a regular archive file, so we can just unzip it. And it's going to create a bunch of files on my desktop, that's alright. The one that we care about is classes.dex. We can delete the rest of them. So using the dex to jar, which I've already downloaded, it, it comes with a lot of files in it. But we only care about one, one of the files. So let's go ahead and run the following. Inside that directory, there's a file called dex to jar .sh. If, Because we're on a Mac, uh, we want the sh file. If you're on Windows, you want the bat file. So we're going to do that, and then space, and then classes.dex. And that went ahead, and it spat out a jar version of this file, which is exactly what we wanted. So let's go ahead and open up the JD GUI program that we downloaded. And we're going to open this newly created jar file. We're going to drop down, and here's our source code, pretty much exactly how we how we had it. Um, and just like that, if you were to root your phone and obtain APK files, you could uh, get the source code. But we are not malicious users, so. Do not use this this note uh, this knowledge for bad. Use this knowledge to better protect yourself from people who do do this to applications, because you want to be able to protect the source code that you work so hard on. All right, we just demonstrated how to do that with a native Android application. So let's go ahead and take a look at what what would happen uh, to a hybrid application. So for this example, we're going to be using Apache Cordova and the Ionic framework. Um, well, you know what, to make things even easier, let's go ahead and just do Apache Cordova since that's the base. 
So let's create a new project. And it created it on the desktop. So let's navigate into it. We're going to add the Android platform. So inside of our project directory, all of our source code is in the www folder. And what it is, is it's just um, our JavaScript. We've got all of our JavaScript right here. We've got our index.html file right here. So it's all very web-based, which is fine. It, it still creates perfectly usable apps. So let's go ahead and build, build our um, project. We're building because we know that there's perfectly suitable source code uh, inside the template. Should be almost done. All right. With it built, it put the file in the platforms, Android, and then ant build directory. And in it, we can find test project uh, hyphen debug apk. So let's go back to our desktop. And we are going to, just like the other project, unzip it. And this is where things actually get a little scary. All of our code is, we don't even have to use any external applications to view it. We can just go into the uh, assets and then www folder and it's all there. It's it's in plain text. Nothing has happened to it. So any anyone who's made their application with Apache Cordova, their their code is is in plain text. Um, again, you shouldn't be using uh, what I tell you in this tutorial for malicious activity. You should be using it because you should be aware on how easy it is for people to obtain your code. So you don't want to do the bare minimum when you release your application. There are steps to better protect yourself. So for example, in the Apache Cordova, um, when you're building Apache Cordova applications, you can use uh, what is called Uglify, and it's called Uglify.js. And this application will actually um, obfuscate, if I'm saying that correctly, uh, your code, making it a lot more difficult to decipher in plain text. It's not encrypted, it's just kind of uh, jarbled up and not so clear. It's flat, It's the variables have been renamed. Uh, it, it makes it a lot more difficult for people to see your code. And then if you're building native Android applications, you want to be using Android ProGuard, which ships with uh, your newly created project, you just have to enable it and do a little bit of configurations. But by doing this, it, it may deter people from stealing your source code. It, uh, you don't want people to get into your source code, especially if you're, for some wrong reason, you're storing passwords and stuff in your source code, which is a very bad thing to do. You don't want people to get this information. So to sum things up, I showed you how to extract the source code from a native Android application as well as a hybrid Android application. I showed you that with the native Android application, you can use two tools, Dex2Jar and JDGUI.
And then with the hybrid application, you only need to know how to use uh, the unzip tool. Uh, don't use this for malicious activity. Use it to protect yourself, uh, and everything should be all right. If you like this video and are interested in seeing what else I have to offer, please subscribe to my channel as well as my written web blog. Thank you.